I want to give it up to all our deaf family. Go ahead, I want to give it up to all our deaf family that are in the house. Amen. We have a deaf ministry here at Chapel of Change because we believe that God reaches all different groups of people. Amen. Amen. And um, this sister, she helps lead the deaf ministry, and she came about maybe about a year ago, and the Lord has continued to grow. Um, how many deaf family in the house? Raise your hand if you're deaf today. Give it up for them one more time. Amen. Amen. We, we, and I want to say this before I introduce her, we recognize that God is doing something special amongst the deaf people. And we want to help. We want to partner with God. We want to throw more fuel to the fire yes. that God is doing. So you guys are welcome to take this journey with us in serving the Lord. And we will do our best to minister to you and your needs. Uh, because God is giving fresh hope to everybody through Chapel of Change. Amen? Yeah. So with that said, amen. With that said, let's give the Lord a hand praise for our sister Renee. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Brian, for your word of encouragement. I'm so excited to see what God will do for the deaf ministry. It's already growing. We have 34 people. I struggle with giving a testimony because I've never been to prison. <laughs> but, on the other hand, but on the other hand, that is my testimony. I'm just kidding. All right, okay, okay. <laughs> Girl, I have been waiting for them to come. <laughs> I don't know how to be no, serious without being funny, that's just in me, that's just in me. Anyway, okay. Um, even though I didn't have a, you know, a horrible life growing up or anything like that, but looking back to my old life and how God changed me, you know, back then before I accepted Jesus, I was way living in Hollywood. I was a leader there. I had a good job. I was supervised and everything was going good. Everything was going good. I had a handsome boyfriend and all that was going good. But something was lacking. Something was lacking. I was carpooling back and forth from home to my office. And one person kept telling me about Jesus. I said, hey, I was born Catholic. Leave me alone. I'm going to die Catholic. <laughs> she was beating me, beating me the word of God. Then one day she asked me to go visit her church. They're having a special event. I said, okay, fine. I'm not doing anything Friday night. Fine, I'll go. Hold on. Love, I, and I was like, oh, it's not that funny. Good happening here, but why are these all so young with a youth revival? I was 30 years old. My friend was like one of the leaders, but at the end of the sermon, I was the only adult who went to the altar and accepted Jesus. You see, I was only. If only if I could just show you, you know, it's funny, I'm going off the point. I have a DVD of my testimony. I'm going to go, here, Brian, show the video. I don't want to excite you guys, but, you know, God blocked for many reasons, so it's fine, I'm here now. But, I, all the time, all the time, I would be high and having people over my house, we would get high and drunk, go to nightclub, VIP act, and hey, you know me, <laughs> like that. I was always leaving. <laughs> But I was missing something. What was I missing? Love. And I met love the year 2000, that church, the youth revival. I got on the altar and said, God, I'm tired of looking for peace. I'm tired of looking for joy. I'm tired of looking for love, different men. Switch, 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 switch. <laughs> I've been married three times, and who's right there. But, what am I saying? 
the day I went to the altar. Now I encourage you, always go to the altar every chance you get. This altar is a vision like a cross with Jesus crucified on. When you go to the altar, you are receiving the blood of Jesus. You get it, you get it. And that's how you will receive the true meaning of love. That's how you will get the peace inside of you. Yes, situation comes up in my life, but I have peace because Jesus is here. Amen. I'm always filled with joy. Yeah, I get mad sometimes, but I'm joy. I'm filled with joy. And then my husband comes into my life. I said, no, 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 no. I have an ugly background. Look, I have two children, the both both from a different father. Different father, sign you off. But both of my children are from a different father. You want children? Yeah, we'll let you have children when I'm done. <laughs> so he went and he prayed for a week, came back, said yeah. Thank you, honey. For the longest time, I've been using it to sing to, to glorify His name, Jim. But now I can use the same gift to glorify Him. Yeah. I know I'm running out of time. He's giving me a limit. He said he's going to kick me out if I go on and on and on. You got the right shoes on, too. three birds, number one. Never, never forget, <laughs> never forget your first love. If you have a pen and paper, write it down. Repi no, 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 no. Uh-oh, I deleted it. It's in Revelation. Ah, I deleted it. It's in Revelation. Never forget your first love. So if you are single and you've been looking for a man or a woman, get over here. I'm telling you that this is my testimony. I've experienced it. God took his hand. I have a trash bag full of dirt. Feel, feel, feel. And the day I got saved, I never smoked again. Well, that's a lie. I tried it one time, but I never smoked again. I never got high again. And I never got drunk again. Ever since that day, I accepted the Lord Jesus. Today. I was 17 years now. Woo! You have two places to go when problems arise or lonely. You can run to the devil and you can run to God. Always run to God. Always. Second word. Because of my path, I broke many hearts. I had some enemy. But ever since I've been saved, I did everything in my part to live in peace with everyone. Some of these down here I've been enemies with. Romans chapter 12 verse 18 says, do your best to live in peace. Your best to live in peace with everyone. I'm friends with my daughter's father, Scott, and her, her father's mother is here. Where's Kathy? Is she here? Is she here? Well, anyway, my ex-boyfriend's mom worked like this. My son Judah, he's not around, but I'm ready to open my arms. I'm doing my part to live in peace with everyone. Do the same. Yeah. And the last one is First Peter chapter 4, 10 and 11 says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use those gifts well to serve one another. Do you have a gift of speaking or signing? Then as though God himself is speaking to you. When you speak, sign or speak, let God speak. Amen. Do you have the gift? Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen.
Thank you, thank you. I'm ready to step out. I just want to say that, yeah, the first time I came here was because I was helping a brother from backsliding with Pablo right here. <laughs> I thought I could come to Chapel of Chain, come. But when I brought him here, that same day, the first time we were sitting where my daughter is sitting, right next to him, right next to her, sorry, right next to her. I was sitting there and God gave me a vision. Who was that vision? He was standing right here speaking to you guys. But Pastor Brian, I'm not going to miss that first time. It's my last time either. <laughs> I know. Because I'm going to do what the word says. You, my gift. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I love you all. And thank you, my friends, for coming to support me. Stay with God. God is good. All the time. Thank you. Give it up one more time for Sister Renee. Like this, like this, like this, like this. Amen.